Hi everyone, this is Elias Martin of CollectingJapanesePrints.com. Welcome to Wood Woodblock Wednesday, where every Wednesday we get together and discuss Japanese prints, paintings, history, and culture. Today, uh, today's Woodblock Wednesday is a really interesting treat, um, at least for me, and I hope it is for all of you. Um, I I've been collecting Japanese prints for over 25 years, about 25 years. And I started really early in life. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, I started dealing in prints uh, about 20 years ago, a little more than 20 years ago. And I'm still learning. I'm still learning uh, things every single day. And that's what makes uh, this area of collecting and, and uh, wonderful. There's always something to learn. Um, and I actually learned something fairly recently uh, in the last week or so about a very important Obata print um, that I've always been a fan of. And I discovered a lot of information from a fellow collector. Uh, and so um, he, he didn't uh, mention that I could reveal his name. I don't think he knew that I was going to do a Woodblock Wednesday on it. And so um, in the future, I might reveal his name if he's interested in me making him public. But I do owe a lot of this information to that particular collector who's a very astute collector of Obata's work. And so... Um, without further ado, let's go to the table and have a look um, at what we have today. So I'm going to pan over to the work we're going to discuss. And just um, so that we could get sort of oriented, um, many of, of you who are joining us may not even know who Obata is. So let me give you a little bit of information. His name is Chi Chiyura Obata. And his dates are from 1885 through 1975. He passed away the year I was born. Wow. Um, I just actually looked at this paper and, and realized that. So he's a Japanese-American um, painter and, wood, and woodblock printmaker. He was born in Japan, but he immigrated into the U.S. in 1903. And so he actually saw a, a fair amount of all of the issues happening in, in the United States during World War II. Uh, Obata was actually um, put into an internment camp along with a lot of other Japanese and Japanese American um, citizens. It's one of the um, one of those really dark parts of American history. And for those of you who, who are not aware, I would recommend looking into that part of our history. Um, but Obata being an artist produced a wonderful work of art, a body of work actually in the internment camps. So those, those things exist. There's watercolors and sketches. So I would encourage all of you um, to have a look at that body of work. But for today's conversation, you know, I want to talk about an American design produced by a Japanese American artist. And this print is considered Obata's um, masterpiece of, of his um, woodblock print uh, making. It, it belongs to a series of prints that depict the Yosemite Valley. Um, and, um, you know, and, and the prints are just fantastic. They were based on watercolors that were produced on sites. And um, Obata was really influenced by Hiroshi Yoshida, another woodblock uh, print artist who was Japanese, who traveled extensively throughout Europe Asia, Southeast Asia, and North America. And he produced a print by, um, titled El Capitan, um, which uh, depicts a, a mountain um, face um, in the same region, basically in California. And that design is quite famous. Uh, it is one of those um, mountains that people want to uh, <laughs> scale. And there's actually, I think, a, a movie that came out recently about a person trying to do that with no equipment. I haven't seen it, but but it, it is a very famous uh, mountain. Uh, and, um, and so Obata was influenced by Hiroshi Yoshida um, in that particular print series of North America. And um, Obata being um, an immigrant into California, but was really a big fan of California, he depicted some of California's most important national treasures uh, for all of us. You know, he left such a legacy of these am amazing images. And uh, this particular print 
is known um, by the title Lake Basin in High Sierra. It was done in 1930. But I want to talk about this particular impression because it's been discovered fairly recently, at least, at least to me. It's news to me. This is the first state of that print, and it was not done in 1930. It was done before 1930. And this variant, because if, we, if you're familiar with this design, it looks very different. Um, the 1930 design um, and the prints from that particular series were produced by Takamizawa. He was a Japanese publisher. And what happened is, and this is the story, we're not 100% certain, but this is what we can discern. Obata traveled to Japan in the 20s and um, produced this exact print for an exhibition. And um, the, the, the print, there's, there's a printer and a carver information there. The print is even numbered. And the, the point is, this print was produced for the Japanese. Um, and um, it, was, it was, of course, uh, produced based on a watercolor of his visit to this area. But he produced it on his own independently. The blocks were carved for this particular design. And apparently, it wasn't until after the exhibition um, that Takamizawa approached Obata to collaborate on, on the series. So the other woodblock prints were produced um, in, 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 you know, for, for that particular series. But this impression of this design was actually conceived before 1930, before the Takamizawa published um, edition, which is fascinating. Now, I want to show you, I have, I have these two books here. I always like to show books uh, based on the topics that we're, we're discussing. These two books are great. They're on Obata. Um, this one uh, is primarily focused on his original works, his watercolors and, and Sumi paintings. And this, this one is a good overview of the series that we're discussing. And see, I've bookmarked it here. Let me see if I could do it with one hand. This is the print, um, the version that most people, hear me, see if I can angle it, okay. This is the version that most people um, are familiar with. Um, it's a stunning design, um, and it's produced in a manner that really um, replicates his watercolor. It's, it has a very strong watercolor feel. You know, I'll zoom, zoom in and you can see um, the, the watercolor effects in the, in the finished print. And if I can, you could see here the signature and his seals in the bottom left corner. And that's what the print looks like. The coloration is stronger and, um, and, it, and it's signed and sealed in a really consistent way. But here, I'm gonna put the bookmark back. On this impression, you will notice he has his Japanese seal here with his signature and there is no Western signature on the print whatsoever. And um, here we also have something that is not on the Takamizawa printing. This is the title in Japanese and in English. And of course, these, the, these seals, the carver, the printer, and the particular numeration for this particular print, these are not on the Takamizawa prints. And the, and the printer, of this print is a different printer from the Takamizawa impression. So that's also important. So at the end of the day, what we're talking about here is a the first state, the 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 first version of the this really important, historically important um, design by Obata. It is considered his masterpiece. Um, the design is so beautiful. Um, and to have the first state impression is fantastic. I'm, I'm really um, very fortunate to have this impression. Now, the, the version we're looking at here, you're probably wondering, why does it look so different um, versus the one that's the one that most collectors have come to recognize and love? And the answer is actually kind of interesting. There is no 100% answer here, this is just speculation, 
but based on um, some information that we have, uh, you know, at the time, the Japanese, sort of the market for Japanese prints in Japan, uh, the local domestic um, market, sort of favored lighter versions of the designs. So using Hiroshi Yoshida, for example, his red Jizuri sealed prints, by and large, left Japan, went to Europe and to the United States, and that's where they were sold. And the Jizuri sealed uh, designs of his early period prints that were not brightly colored were done in a smaller Jizuri seal with a different color Jizuri seal, usually brown or others. And those impressions, by and large, remained in, in Japan. So the Japanese at the time favored a more um, toned down, um, contemplative, um, surreal, a serene, quiet um, uh, impression with those colors are more muted, more contemplative. And the Western market sort of favored the brightly colored, very richly colored impressions. And so if we look at Yoshida's uh, work, for example, that really kind of tells the tale here on why Obata produced this design in this way, in this impression in this way. He, he, he created it for the exhibition in Japan that uh, occurred in the 20s. And, you know, he, he created it to produce for sale in Japan. Um, when Takamizawa discovered it and, and approached Obata, they tweaked the colors, of course, and the, and the coloration of all the other prints are much more rich, much more vivid for the Western market. And I, I could see, I mean, I love the other version. It's fantastic. But to be able to see the earliest version, you get to see the artist at work. You get to see the artist's original sort of conception of the design. And I think that's really valuable, particularly when we're discussing such an important work. Now, you know, I want to zoom in so I could show you the, the quality of the printing here. You'll see that though the colors are muted, they're still rich and they're done in such a way where you do get a sense of, of it being a watercolor as opposed to a woodblock print. And you can see the wonderful detail here. Um, and then here, um, I don't know if you could tell because I'm using kind of a bright light but there is a white overprinting on the color of the paper. So the natural color of paper is coming through and there's this white overprinting from the, the snow ice glacier uh, portion of this. So it's quite nice. It creates a, a wonderful sense of relief and there's a three dimensional quality um, in that uh, section, particularly in that area. Now, these impressions that were done before 1930, before the Takamizawa impressions, are very rare, extraordinarily rare. I've actually, up until recently, I, was, I wasn't aware that this, this impression existed until I came across this printing. Um, and then I, I, I was able to locate a couple others. But um, really, I can count on one hand the impressions that I know exist of this version. So it's quite rare. And also they're in Japan, they were sold in Japan. And when they come up for sale, they're coming up for sale in Japan. They're not ones you would see in the United States. Those are the second state or the Takamizawa um, version of them. So now I'm gonna go back and I'll see if I could pull out the, the, the book so that you could see. Sorry, I'm trying to do this with one hand. Excuse my close up there. So I'm trying to avoid the glare. So there is th sort of the final version, the one that we've uh, associated with this design. And again, here is this, this earlier version.
I should say that after um, Obata's experience uh, in the United States with the internment camp uh, being being held there and and just sort of th- that whole portion of his life, I'm sure, was very, very difficult. Um, but he produced a good amount of, of work while he was uh, held captive. Um, and, and so there were there's watercolors and sketches, of course, Art supplies were not something that were readily available, but he had things. He had things that he brought with him. And so those things exist. And there's some wonderful artwork that was produced in really dark times. And, um, you know, I encourage all of all of you to look into it because it's, it's really compelling. And it's a document that's been left, a very important document that's been left by these um, important artists uh, showing us what happened and what life was like, and then also showing us um, the artist's spirit where they were they were looking beyond what was happening at the time. So the art, artistic spirit was very strong um, in that time. And Obata was not the only artist. There were several others that were working um, around him who he, he knew as well. And Obata went on um, obviously, he, he was an, an artist and produced a lot of watercolors and paintings that survived. They, they routinely come up for sale. He, he also became a, a teacher, and, you know, and he taught art. He taught painting. So he, he was such a huge contributor to the field. Um, Obata's importance in 20th century uh, Japanese prints can't be understated. I mean... I, I actually still don't think he's got his due. And I think um, once we sort of understand his work and, and, and because there, there's so many paintings that come up that, you know, I, I actually think they're deals. They're, they're, they sell for um, quite a, a, a fair price. And I think that there's so much more um, that will come out in time. You know, there's this book that just came out recently in an exhibition that was just mounted. But I still think in this area of collecting, there's still a lot of uh, growth. And so for collectors who are interested in originals, Obata originals come up for sale. And so they're they're available. They're readily available. And his prints are are pretty rare. And when they come up for sale, they're they're expensive. But they're they're when we look at his body of work compared to let's say California, uh, artists based in California who were making woodblock prints, his prices are still very reasonable. So th- that's that's an interesting thing to point out in terms of, you know, collectability and connoisseurship in terms of the value of these things. And I don't like to necessarily look at a print and think of its monetarily value because, you know, that's irrelevant. And at the end of the day, that could change at any given time. But I do think about it in a sense to make recommendations for collectors uh, if they want to move into a particular area of collecting that, you know, shares promise uh, and and some, you know, some, some opportunities. So these prints do come up. Uh, this one will be going up on my website, so it will be available for sale in the next couple of months. I'm just kind of holding on to it a little bit because I'm sort of studying it. I'm doing a little bit of research to figure out a few more uh, details. Um, there's still a few blanks in between um, what I think I will know to what I know now, particularly the blocks. My questions are, right now about the blocks um, and how many blocks uh, of, of printing blocks were produced to make this impression and whether all of the blocks that um, Obata used on his first state were they used in the Takamizawa impression. I believe so. And I think what Takamizawa did is he inked the same blocks over and over and over again with different pigments to create a d- deeper, richer impression with some variances in color. And you don't need to carve additional blocks to print um, an impression differently. Um, Yoshida has taught us that with his wonderful sailboat series. It's a matter of just how you ink them and how many times you print them. So, so but I'm just studying how many blocks he could have used to produce this impression versus the the one that we've come to know um, and love. So, you know, one last time, I'll show this version of it. And excuse the glare, but, you know, it's 
I have the bright lights overhead. It's wonderful to have uh, Japanese woodblock print artists producing designs of North America, particularly areas that are so, so beautiful, uh, areas that we treasure um, in and out of California. That area is just so gorgeous. And so to have these designs um, available is a treasure. So it's one of those things that we're very fortunate um, that these Japanese artists visited areas in North America, particularly in the United States, to leave us these fantastic uh, prints. So I'm going to zoom in one last time so you could see. So as I said at the beginning, it's it's it, this area, you know, collecting Japanese prints is such a wonderful area. Uh, partly for me, for someone who's been doing this for over 20 years, I, there's still things you learn. And the fact that I've stumbled upon this um, really rare early impression, the first edition of her state of this design, um, you know, I've known Obata's work for over 25 years. And I've, I've bought and sold Obata's work over the years and been very, uh, I'm a big fan of his work. And yet I was never aware of this impression. So every day is an opportunity to discover and learn new things. And this is why this area of collecting is just so, so fascinating and, and great. Well, I want to thank all of you for joining me on our latest with Black Wednesday. I was very happy and very fortunate to share this wonderful impression by Obata with all of you. Uh, and if you have any questions or you have any information to add, uh, I would love uh, to hear it. Uh, feel free to post a comment below in the video, or you could private message me if you have any questions about the print or any additions or anything you would want to share. I'd I'm always happy to field questions, and, I, and I, my ears are always open. Um, as I said, uh, a fellow collector uh, shared a lot of this information that I shared with all of you today. And so I have him to thank for this. And this, so this is why I do these videos. Uh, it's when you have information, uh, particularly stuff that is not yet uh, known, widely. I mean, it's, it's, I feel like it's my responsibility to share the information with all of you. So it's an honor and a pleasure to do that. And I'm happy you joined me um, on our latest installment of Woodblock Wednesday. If you haven't had a chance, uh, feel free to check out my website, collectingjapaneseprints.com. I just uploaded a nice group of Japanese prints uh, for sale. Uh, they went up a couple weeks ago. So if you haven't had haven't had a chance to look, please have a look. Um, and of course, I'm working on my next exhibition, which will be really great. I had planned on doing that for this exhibition, but I was kind of in a rush to get these up for a particular consigner. It was his request that they go up immediately, and so they went up. But uh, the the really great exhibition of prints I wanted to put together will be going up um, towards June. And there'll be a little bit of everything, some fantastic ukiyo-e, great shinhanga, sosaku hanga. So that's something to look forward to. Um, and if, you know, if you're looking for a particular print, of course, uh, private message me and um, I'll be happy to assist. So thanks again for joining me. I look forward to seeing all of you again at the next installment of Woodblock Wednesday. Until then, bye-bye.